Hey, welcome back to Spectra Creative, the channel about toys. And today with toys, I want to talk about upgrading your toys. But before that, a quick little plug for one of my subscribers, John Murray. Uh, John is a longtime subscriber and longtime comment poster, and I always love to uh, get people who are on the comment section in front of people. So John Murray is an author, and he has his second book, Silver Cross. It's coming out. His series uh, tells the story of sort of a uh, supernatural P.I., shall we say. It's very much kind of like Spawn meets you know, like 1940s noir. So check out johnmoreyauthor.com. His books are also on Amazon, and his new second book, Silver Cross, is out now. All right, so back to the video. So as I've noted in many videos, I'm a big toy collector. I've also been blessed with a career in the toy industry, working for quite a few companies, Mattel, Jax, Jada, Entertainment Earth. One of the toy form factors that I tend to collect the most is 6-inch. I, well, I have them all over my shelves. I also have sort of a, a, a box of them in my office, as well as my box of 3 and 3 fourths Star Wars there next to it. There, I can just sort of pull out any one of my favorite figures. Now, of all of the 6-inch figures in my whole office, there's one that I've upgraded. And that's this Figure Arts Doctor Strange. So this is a $100 figure uh, from the Japanese market that you can get in the U.S. because, you know, online buying lets you do that. This figure is more deluxe. It's not really for playing with as much as for posing. Uh, it's a little more fragile. And it's interesting with these type of figures, you often get figures of things that are not in the movies. Like, uh, you know, things that get cut on the living room floor. It happens with Funko, too but it tends to happen with a lot of these figures, probably why Doctor Strange comes with all of these giant flame accessories that he didn't use in his movie or any of his appearances. But hey, they make great effects for the Human Torch, so why am I complaining? All right, so there are several versions of this figure and several versions of deluxe Doctor Strange figures out there. And why would I spend $100 on a six-inch figure when, for much less money, I can have Doctor Strange in any number of form factors? And they can range from cute to weird to adorable to having action features to being non-articulated statues to cars. Well, okay, yeah, you know, you can have Doctor Strange as a car. And, of course, there's, you know, vintage figures, too, from, you know, back when we were kids. And there's animated style and movie style and comic book style. And, you know, no lack of Doctor Strange figures and no lack of six-inch Doctor Strange figures. You know, choice of quite a few. Heck, you could even have a paper Doctor Strange if you're into origami. And, hey, who isn't into origami? Now, I do own the Marvel Legends Doctor Strange figure, but when the figure arts version came out, I upgraded. So I took what was a $20 figure, and I now own a $100 version of the same figure. So why do we do this? Why, as collectors, do we upgrade from one to something bigger, something more expensive, something more luxurious, shall we say? Well, it's in a lot of ways similar to when people upgrade many things in their life. People are upgrading their houses, their cars, their wardrobe, and there's a lot of emotional reasons why people do this. With a car, it's often because, well, you actually get more when you have a luxury car, if you will, versus having a standard car. I mean, the car's still going to get you around town, but it's probably going to offer things like more comfort. When you drive around in a luxury car, you are more comfortable than driving around in an economy car. There's also the status of people being able to see you in this luxury car and saying, whoa, there goes that person with that cool car, and which of course comes with bragging rights and being able to say, you know, hey, I'm the coolest, I'm the best, I have this car. And that is similar to action figures, but there's something unique about collecting action figures that's different from other things we upgrade in our life. So I've made a few videos where I've talked about how collecting action figures is very similar to having a trophy shelf. The figures are our trophies from our 10, 20 years of action figure collecting. And the thing that's unique about action figures is the sense of control. So you don't have this with a car or a house or a wardrobe. With action figures, and as action figure collectors versus p kids playing with it, when you have the figure, you have control over that figure. What I mean by that is, I mean, obviously you can't just, you know, in real life, tell Spider-Man what to do. I mean, part of that is because Spider-Man doesn't exist in real life. Don't tell anyone that. But, yes, 
With an action figure, however, you do control Spider-Man. You can tell him, or rather pose him, exactly the way you want. And it's not just limited to one figure. By taking multiple figures, even from different intellectual properties, and putting them next to each other, you can create interesting situations. And because action figures are on your shelf and you control it, well, we're never going to see movies that combine things like Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Well, actually, maybe we will now that Disney owns them. But the point is, you can do that on your shelf anytime you want with action figures and tell that story. Or, you know, you can pose action figures, you know, next to other objects, and it creates almost an artistic vision or statement. So when we're upgrading our figures, it all plays into this. Upgrades have a few things. One is that they have a better sculpt. And in the toy industry, the face sculpt of a character is called the portrait. So when you're commissioning a face sculpt from an artist to sculpt a character, what you're commissioning, you say, I need a portrait. I need a portrait of Doctor Strange or a portrait of Bruce Wayne or, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch, if you will. So this is the Hot Toys version. And yeah, darn if that doesn't look exactly like Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, that could basically be a photograph of the actor. And when you have an upgraded figure, whether it's the 12-inch Hot Toys or the 6-inch uh, figure arts, you're getting a better portrait, one that looks more like the artist. The other thing you're getting is more accessories. And I know I was joking about all the flame accessories, which weren't actually in the movie, but regardless of what they are, you're also getting, you know, multiple hands, multiple heads, in the case of Doctor Strange here, magical effects. And I know I'm using Doctor Strange as an example, but, you know, you could do this with almost any character that is offered in a basic line and then has a deluxe version. So, yeah, you're getting piece count. You're getting amazing piece count. And what this allows you to do as a collector is have even more control. So where an articulated figure like those Spider-Men, you can pose in any way you want, well, with the deluxe version, if you've upgraded from a basic figure like a Marvel Legends or a DCU Classic, well, now with something like a Hot Toys or Figure Arts, you can increase the number of ways you can pose the figure because the accessories really bring out the character. And again, it doesn't have to just be Doctor Strange. I just happen to pick him because that's the one figure that I own an upgrade of. But, you know, obviously there's any number of characters. There's male characters, there's female characters, there are characters that are not Avengers. I just happen to be using Marvel characters as an example. But, you know, Hot Toys also makes other brands too. And these figures are more detailed, they have better face sculpts, but most of all they have more display options. And, you know, more hands, more heads, more, more chotch, if you will. So in the end, it's giving us more control. And when you choose to upgrade, it's usually because it's a character you really, really love. I happen to really, I've always loved Doctor Strange. And I shamelessly am really a fan of Benedict Cumberbatch, too. What can I say? He's my favorite Sherlock Holmes. Sorry, uh, Basil Rathbone. But when you're in control as an adult collector, the more options you have, the more in control you feel. And that's why we collect, because we want to feel control of these characters that are otherwise larger than life. And yeah, there's a new Doctor Strange coming out in a few weeks, a few months, and I'm probably going to buy this too, even though I've already upgraded and own you know, the $100 version. But hey, now I can have one that actually can live in my toy box, and I don't have to worry about it breaking if I drop it on other toys or you know, it uh, you know, happens to... I don't know, get in a fight with the uh, comic book version of himself. Oh my God, they're coming out with this too. I'm going to be spending a lot of money on Doctor Strange toys in the next few months. Oh, well, I guess everyone should have that curse. Either way, I've already upgraded and I probably don't need any more Doctor Strange toys. But for whatever figure character speaks to you, upgrading is really the answer. And we all know how many do you need? The answer is always 42. I hope this video was enlightening about why toy collectors choose to get more deluxe versions of characters they may already own when less expensive options are out there. Let me know in the comments below what characters have you upgraded in your collection. I'm very curious to talk about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.